Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides. For the latest updates and information, you can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides. This Major League Baseball episode covers every game scheduled to be played on Saturday, October 15th, 2022. We got four games for you today. In case you're here, Check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new for a primer and explanation. You can pause if need be. Otherwise, the goals for this episode are to share key information about these games, give you a few things to think on, and explain why certain plays are being made. I never recommend blindly tailing or fitting any pick, but rather to hear the justifications and thought processes to make sure you're fully on board with me or against me before investing your hard-earned money. As always, remember that there are no locks in gambling, so what I provide are loves, likes, and leans, that is A, B, and C grades, to indicate my confidence level with respect to scaling wagers. However, please understand that good and bad variants will occur, so as much as I'd like to say will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. Uh, split on totals uh, yesterday here on Friday with three games, but... Nailed all three sides. Two of them were a great play. So a lot of fun around these parts. Another good playoffs shaping up so far, just like last year, just like most of the season's been. Um, just hope it continues. It's been fun so far. We'll try to do it again today. Got four games for you before we get to those. So reminders, please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Also, if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And if you turn on notifications, you won't miss any of the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. And lastly, we've got that Patreon page for those of you looking to support the show and get extra benefits. Membership starts at $3 per month, which gets you the play of the day and all plays uh, that I'm not able to make on show because the number isn't as favorable and or the number's not available. It's going to come up later on in this show today. For college football, if you're getting prepped for that today, I'll have a play of each time slot. Those went four and one last week. Hopefully, we can replicate that. And a lot of other goodies on that Patreon page. So it's in the crawler there at the bottom. You can hit that link. It's also in the show description. Otherwise, let's get to the games. All lines courtesy of Bet Online. Sign up link in the show description. And current as of the time of this recording, late night, Friday night, early morning, Saturday depending on where you are. And as a reminder, the prices you will see on the screen in parentheses are the money line prices needed for those sides to reach a certain level play according to my model sideline. Got 207 Eastern first pitch Braves at the Phillies. Phillies get it done for us here on Friday, taking a 2-1 series lead. Uh, this is where it gets sketchy for them. Uh, throwing Noah Syndergaard against Charlie Morton and then if it gets to a game five, Ranger Suarez, who's not bad, but as much as he outdueled Max Fried in game one, that's not something you count on happening again. So I feel like put themselves in a good position, but now can they win the last one is the question. Weatherwise, in Philadelphia, it's going to be in the upper 60s for the entirety of this game. And the winds will be blowing out to right center field over 10 miles an hour. There's a reason this total is nine, and it's a combination of the pitching being a little bit uh, lackluster and the weather it's not a hot day so the ball's not gonna be flying out because of the heat but the wind blowing out is definitely going to help uh help the hitters hurt the pitchers right uh, charlie morton in this one I, I mentioned this about him recently and previously really just struggling all season every time he thought he's figured it out he hasn't he does better in the playoffs. What does that mean? I don't know. When I say give you some things to think on, some days I probably do a better job than others. That. That's something to think on, how you really feel about the, the fact that Morton has done better in the postseason. He's been fantastic in the postseason um, for both the Astros and the Rays and last year for the Braves. But those seasons were better in general. So how do you feel about that now? that this season hasn't been that good. Um, a 434 ERA, underlying metrics say it should be in the low four. So he's not a guy I'm overly high on. So I'd like to give him an 88 rating, but of course I'm not that high on Syndergaard either. And I will say that the model does give him a 93 rating. He did finish the year with an ERA below four and the underlying metrics say that's pretty accurate. So just from a this year perspective, uh, Syndergaard outperformed Morton based off of ERA and the advanced metrics. Now, Syndergaard was put in a slightly better position at the the stretch. He wasn't asked to do too much for the Phillies, so maybe that helps. 
again, that's kind of the biggest thing here is how you feel about the pitchers. I, I think it's slight Braves edge starting pitcher wise. And I think it's Braves edge with the bullpen as well. Uh, and it's a little bit of Braves edge to the offense, but the games in Philadelphia, I think that all basically balances out and says the Braves should be slight favorites. Sideline says minus one Oh nine. That's a 52% chance of winning. So pretty close to a coin toss and sideline says this total should be 8.7. So I've got two plays in this game. I'm going to take the Phillies on the run line at minus 150, and I'm going to take the under nine at minus 128. Those under nines are disappearing quickly. Hopefully you're seeing this uh, closer to recording than not. Uh, there's still a lot of books. As at the time of this recording, they still have under nine minus 110 that I think are just lagging behind and not paying attention at this time of night. But the sharper books, including uh, bet online have moved this juice up and or have already gone to eight and a half at eight and a half. I think it's a pass for me. You might could lean over, but I don't really think it's enough value to play it. This under nine though, nine being such a common likely outcome in a higher scoring game. I think going under makes sense. Sideline doesn't really know about the whole, you know, all hands on deck situation that we have here. Um, the fact that the Braves are up against it, right? It's not that smart of a model. It does have a little bit of a boost for playoffs to say that pitchers aren't given long leashes. Um, but I think there's like a little extra that maybe this goes under this, given the situation that it is one team desperately trying to clinch and not go to Atlanta and the other team desperately trying to win or else their season's over. I think that tends to lead us to a more slightly lower scoring game. So I think under nine makes a lot of sense. And like I said, it's a pass at eight and a half to me. And like I said, I'll be on the Phillies here. Right now, the price in the Phillies money line is plus 110, and the price for the Braves is minus 120. As you can see on the screen, minus 120 is just kind of a non-starter for me on the Braves. It's not something that I'm that interested in. I'd rather be on the Phillies. Now, by the time you watch this, assuming that there's nothing changed with the pitchers, no injury things that we find out, maybe the price has changed. Maybe the Braves become more profitable. Again, if it gets down to like minus 105, I'd be interested in the Braves. Right now, we're a good 15 cents off 20 cents from where I want to be off on the Braves, but the Phillies are right there at plus 110 sideline wants plus 112 before it gets to a B pick. So if you're eyeing this money line, maybe you enter the market at plus 110, maybe you wait, hold off and try to get a plus 115. Once you get to plus 120, you're basically at an A grade. So just a little bit of movement there and you've got a more value play on the Phillies, but I'm just going to play them on the run line. I think there's a little bit of extra value on the run line, just given that I think it's a little bit lower, lower scoring than they think it is. And so I think that minus 150 offers some value. I think this is going to be a tight game late. And at that point, I kind of think the plus one and a half is the smarter play given the Braves edge in the bullpen, that it's more likely that the Braves win a four to three, uh, five to four type ball game. And then we can win or push the total and get the run line on the Phillies. I think it's more likely that if they lose, they lose by one. And they may pull it off. Again, they desperately want to win this game. So minus 150, not a bad play, given that if they win, we win. Or if they lose by one, we win. It's worked for us mostly. Here down the stretch, I'm going to go back to the run line play there. Again, as long uh, as well as the under nine. 407 Eastern first pitch Astros, the Mariners, another place that the park is going to be rocking. I'm projecting the roof open. It projects to be a very nice day there. Low 70s start, upper 70s to finish. And that's going to give the total a little bit of a boost. Might pick up a little bit of wind, but if nothing else, just a slightly warmer day as opposed to a dreary, colder Seattle day. Uh, it's going to make the ball carry a little bit better in that ballpark. We've talked about this, like we talked about with Oakland throughout the season. Seattle's kind of the same thing. Uh, during the day, you can get some over action there. Um, it's just you don't really want overs at night for the most part in that park. So I'm going over seven at even money. Sideline says seven and a half, and I tend to think seven and a half is the right number. I really am a coin toss between if I think seven is more likely or eight is more likely in this game. Over seven, I don't have to worry about it. Right? We have that push protection and even money. I think there's a lot of value on going over this total. I like both of these pitchers, but neither one of these pitchers are as good as Justin Verlander, uh, Framber Valdez, or Luis Castillo. Uh, they're more in the Logan Gilbert category, but I mean, you've thrown three of the four best pitchers already, and now you're throwing good pitchers, just not great pitchers. And these offenses are good. Talk about the Astros offense. I don't have to tell you much there. The Mariners offense, I'm probably preaching the choir, but again, with the injuries, with the park they play in, this offense is much better than you're probably thinking. Uh, check the ratings for the offense that I project. 
in that tab, the team's tab of the sheet. And you can see, like, I think this offense is pretty good. We need diamond advanced metrics, uh, ballpark neutral stats, right? The Mariners offense is good. The offenses are more good than the pitchers are good in this one. So I think the over seven makes a lot of sense. And uh, Seattle's a pitcher from the ballpark, but like I said, not as much in the day, not as much in the day that's going to get up towards 80 degrees. So the over makes a lot of sense. With regards to the side, this is our first C grade play of the uh, of this round. Um, I don't think there's a lot of value on it right now. So really my advice to you on this one is take note of the prices on the screen. Those are the prices that I would need. If this number moves one way or the other, we have a pretty good feel of what the starting lineups are going to be. So I don't expect much change once that's announced. Maybe there's some surprise. But otherwise, we kind of know what we're getting here. And right now, I think the Astros should be slight favorites. Uh, Sideline says minus 104, but the price is pretty good. Right now, I'll go with the C-grade pick on the Astros. If you make me pick at pretty close to even money, I'd rather have them. I am well aware that Seattle is going to be rocking. But that can work both ways. That can help a team and that can hurt a team. And I backed the Mariners. Right, I'm an Astros fan, full disclosure. But I backed the Mariners uh, here the first two games and uh, got us the win on the run line in the first game and just missed by a run on the run line in the second game. Uh, but the whole you know, playoff drought, crazy crowd, it can work both ways. It can get tight. It can get pressure, right? It can help you out. It could go either way. We don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell you, if you talk about the Phillies today and how that place was rocking and they got the win, listen, they didn't get the win because the crowd was crazy. They got the win because Spencer Strider's fastball stopped being 99 miles an hour and we know that when a pitcher's velocity drops below about 98, he becomes a lot more hittable, and the Phillies crushed him. And it was about Strider coming back from the IL and looking great his first two innings and then just running out of steam. That's why the Phillies won the game. And I'm not saying like the crowd couldn't have helped, but like they won that game because Strider ran out of gas, and the Phillies got a ton of runs in one inning. So I don't know if the crowd's going to help the marriage or not. I, Maybe, maybe not. I, I just, I don't think it's as simple as, oh, it's going to be too much pressure. I don't think it's as simple as like, well, the Phillies had a drought and they won. Like now the Mariners are going to win. If the Mariners win, it's it's not going to be because of the crowd. If the Mariners win, it's going to be because George Kirby throws a fantastic game and the Mariners bats are pretty good and they get to McCullers. And that's very much on the table. That's why I said, I think it's pretty, a coin toss, pretty much a coin toss game, but around even money, I'll take the Astros. Only a secret pick at minus 108. As you can see on screen, I really want minus 102 for it to get to a B-grade pick. The current price of the Mariners is minus 102, and I really need plus odds. As you can see on screen, I really need plus 107. So we're we're kind of right in no man's land right now. So see where this price is. Shop around. See if you can get some good value. But it's my least confident play so far in this series. I think it should be a fantastic matchup. Kirby being a rookie. With that crowd, you have, I have no idea. I have no idea if it's going to help them or hurt them. Uh, McCullers, I will say as an Astros fan, see McCullers, I do not think he will be rattled by that. He is the type of guy who wants the ball in these situations. He's pitched in some of the biggest moments in franchise history. Uh, he doesn't give a crap about any of that stuff. So I'm not worried about him in that environment whatsoever. Uh, I'm more worried about the fact that McCullers – while he did have a 227 ERA in his eight games, the underlying metrics in his ERA should be more in the mid threes. I talked about that throughout the season. He did look better towards the end, but early on, he was just flirting with danger. If you flirt with danger with this Mariners offense, what happened in game two where the Astros were able to get their way out of it, you know, whatever it was, five runners left on base in two innings, in back to back innings there, that might happen again but it might not. And so that's more of my fear with McCullers is if he flirts with that danger, this Mariners offense can make him pay again, two good pitchers, uh, not two great pitchers though. So it, it'll be interesting. And whichever pitcher pitches better is probably going to be the team that wins this. I think both bullpens are pretty solid. Both offenses are pretty solid. Um, it's going to come down to McCullers and Kirby on this one. I think it should be fascinating viewing. Like I said, I slightly in Astros at minus one Oh eight, but not a ton of value. My more favorite play on this one is the over seven, even money. Tonight, game 737 Eastern first pitch. Yankees at the Guardians, and the Guardians getting it done for us again in extra innings. It was a thing of beauty, and look, we're going to still be on the Guardians again. Y'all know how I feel about them. Uh, I'm going to try to talk about the things that you aren't going to predict that I say. First, I want to talk about the weather. Mid-50s for the totality of this game. The wind blowing... 
out or across to right field at this point. And we're talking about double digit mile an hour wins. So it's going to be similar to wins to what we saw last weekend against when they played Tampa. The difference is those wins were blowing in uh, for that first game when it was, you know, uh, such a, a quick dominant pitcher pitching game. Right. Um, this one's going to be on the on the fence if it's out or if it's across. I'm giving the hitters a little bit of a boost because if it's kind of a little cross of both, it will help the hitters just a little bit more than it's going to play as neutral. So a tiny bit of a wind effect there. But chillier temperatures, the thing is that neither one of these pitchers are great. It's similar to what I talked about with the Ashes Mirrors. Both good, not great. McKenzie, fantastic season, of course, so far. But the underlying metric says here I should be a little bit higher. And I actually have him ranked a little bit behind Severino, who, same thing, fantastic season, um, about half the innings. Uh, but underlying metrics lag a little bit. So two pitchers that are good, both get grades in the 80s. That's good. But it, but 70 is our mark for greatness, and neither one of them are there. As much as I liked backing both of these guys throughout the season, uh, I think there can be some runs in this one too. We just missed the over in game two, but I'm going to try the over again here in game three over six and a half. A sideline says it should be 7.1. Again, the Guardians offense above average. They got to their team total. It's just the Yankees couldn't score off Shane Bieber. They probably have a little bit more success against Justin McKenzie. Feels like a game that's 3-3 late. And if it's 3-3 late, then we've got the over. And I like the guard. I love the Guardians here at plus 104. As you can see, they're really even money or better on the Guardians as an A grade play. Sideline says it should be Guardians minus 112. Again, 3 3 late. Who does that favor? Favors the team with a better bullpen. You saw it today. Who has the better bullpen? Cleveland. Best bullpen in the league, in my opinion, according to my model. As good as the Braves' bullpen is, I love this Guardians' bullpen. It is fantastic. They come at you every different way. So they just got to hang in there early. Again, get it to 3-3. Three, three, then plus 104 is a great play because the Guardians should have a little bit more than 50% chance to win that game, and we've already locked in our over. So Guardians plus 104 is a great pick for me and over 6.5 on the total. 9.37 Eastern first pitch. This is the one where you're going to want to sign up on Patreon. Uh, again, it's 3 bucks a month. I give you a ton of goodies. I'm trying to make sure it's worth your money. Uh, but there's no play on this right now because there's no line out. Uh, we haven't confirmed starting pitchers, but it appears to be Tyler Anderson and Joe Musgrove. If it's not, I'll have a quick little write-up about that on uh, Patreon. But this game is, in my opinion, just a carbon copy of Game 3. And I said, with that, I said, hey, the Padres got to win 3 and 4 because Game 5 does not set up well for them. They took care of business in Game 3. The only difference that I see between Game 3 and Game 4 is that the Padres got a little bit of a boost with Blake Snell on the mound being a lefty and the Dodgers is off it's a little bit lefty heavy, whereas the Padres got to face a righty. Today, though, it's going to be flipped. Tyler Anderson's a lefty. Joe Musgrove is a righty. So now the Padres offense gets a little bit of a ding, and the Dodgers offense a little bit of a boost facing a righty. So that's really the only difference in this game from game three. I think I had the Padres as slight favorites in game three. Now I've got the Dodgers as slight favorites. Sideline says it should be minus 104 in favor of LA, but really we're just kind of looking for plus odds on either team. Makes a lot of sense here. But again, it just sets up so similar to game three. Musgrove's a good pitcher, just like Snell's a good pitcher. And I think both of them are better than Gonsolin and Anderson. Gonsolin slash Heaney slash we didn't know if it'd be Dustin May, whoever. All of that's decent, but I think that the Padres pitching is better. That the Dodgers offense a little bit better. Dodgers relievers a little bit better. Games in San Diego. Again, straight coin toss games. Just give the Padres a little bit of an edge in game three, throwing a lefty. Get the Dodgers a little bit of an edge in game four, throwing a lefty. Again, just looking for plus odds, really. So uh, hopefully it kind of tells you how I'm going to play it. Again, I'll make the official pick and the grade on it. Uh, and maybe a total play or not, that'll be on Patreon. Sideline says it should be 7.7. .7. If it's 7, I'm going to go over. Uh, the over did not work in game 3, but over 7 or 7.5 uh, worked in games 1 and 2. This Padres bullpen has been pitching really well, and the Dodgers bullpen's been pitching well. The latter's not overly surprising, but there's going to be some runs at some point. These offenses are too good. You saw it the first two games. So if I could go over seven, I would like that. Seven and a half is really all about the odds. You know, over seven and a half, plus 110, probably worth it. 
maybe plus 105, maybe even money, right? But minus odds, I'm not in shit over seven and a half. And if it were for some reason up to eight, I'd go under eight. I don't see it happening based off where the price has been. But if I get under eight, I would absolutely love that too. Somewhere between seven and eight makes a lot of sense. So it's it's kind of similar to how I assess the Astros Mariners game when I said total should be seven and a half. You know, I think seven and eight are the likely outcomes. And the same thing here, I think seven and eight are the likely outcomes. So if I can go over seven, that's good. If I go under eight, that's good. Seven and a half kind of just kind of depends on the odds. Uh, but again, I'll make an official pick on Patreon. And again, write it up if there is a difference in the handicap based off the starters from what we are projecting right now. That's all I've got for you today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Picks with the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can ensure all the sports betting content we provide on this channel is dropped right into your feed. I will see you again the next day. There are uh, playoff games, which for sure we will get a game for Sunday in Cleveland. We do not know if we're going to have more than that but we will for sure have a Sunday show for that game and maybe more. We will find out with all the college football action, NFL action coming up, playoff baseball here. It's a fun time of year as always. Best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.